All right, this is number seven from the 2014 AP Physics B exam. Uh, this is a kind of a physical optics type of problem dealing with thin film interference. And we've got a white light source shining down on air to oil to plate interface. And uh, we're standing next to that light source looking down at that interface. So we're really seeing reflected light eventually by the time it gets to our eyes. And we are noticing that the, uh, the color appears green. Even though it was white light we shine, we're noticing the green color. So we're getting interference for sure. We know the index refraction of the oil is 152. Uh, air is 1, and we know the wavelength in which we are detecting, 520 nanometers. So first, we want to determine the frequency of the green light in the air. Um, simply, we're looking for the frequency of green light. If we know the wavelength, well, let's look at the original equation. C equals lambda f or the speed of a wave is equal to the wavelength times frequency. In this case, the speed is the speed of light. So the frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength, or 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Divide that by the 520 nanometers. Make sure you count for that nano part, so 10 to the negative 9. And I would toss this all in parentheses, too, to make sure you don't have any calculator errors. You get 5.77 by 10 to the 14 hertz. So that is the frequency of the green light in the air. Okay, now for part B, we want to know the fre frequency of the green light after it enters into the oil. Well, this was a trap or trick question. You've got to remember, frequency for a given already created light source will never change. So even though it enters into oil, the frequency remains constant. So it's still going to be 5.77 by 10 to the 14 hertz. Its wavelength and its speed will likely change as long as the index is different, and it is. But the frequency will. Not. So C wants us to know the wavelength of the green light. This is where we're going to get changed because remember the frequency won't change, but the wavelength and speed can change. I'm going to kind of derive the equation for you. You might already know it, but I want to show you two equations to get to that derivation. First one is the index of refraction in any given material is equal to the speed of light times the speed of the light in that material. So I'm going to subscript these as 1 to show us the initial material. Since C is constant, that means N1 V1 as a product must be the same in every new material. So N1 V1 will equal N2 V2 equals N3 V3, etc. Because again, speed of light is constant. We can also look at the speed of any given wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Well, since the speed will change in a new medium and the wavelength will change in a new medium, but the frequency won't, once again, I can say V1 equals lambda 1 times F. Or V1 over lambda 1 must remain constant, which means it must equal V2 over lambda 2, V3, all the way down the line. Now, in this problem, we know the indexes indices and we know the wavelength of one we're looking for the wavelength of the other we don't know the speed so I want to remove my v1 and 2 so I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my n2 over my v1 over to show n1 over n2 must be equal to v2 over v1 I'm going to do the same thing over here cross multiply lambda 2 over lambda 1 must equal v2 over v1. Well, since v2 and v1 are both uh, in equal equations, in the same equation, I should say, uh, the left side of each equation will also equal each other. So n1 over n2 must be lambda 2 over lambda 1. Ultimately, lambda 2, what I'm looking for, must be equal to the wavelength of the light in its first index divided by the new index. Since we know the wavelength of the light in the first index is 520 nanometers, and we know the index of air is 1, so it just could be the 520 nanometers divided by 1.52. Now this, of course, will give me my wavelength in nanometers, which is perfectly appropriate as long as you actually write nanometer and not meter. Uh, 342 nanometers is the answer. Okay, A, B, and C are all set. Now, D says the oil uh, film thickness is half of the wavelength you found in part C. Is the index of refraction of the plate greater than, less than, or equal to that of the oil? This is where you have to kind of understand thin film interference. 
and understand the ideas of construction and destruction. Really what happens in the beginning is the wavelength will slow down and reflect. Basically you're going to get, let me just kind of sketch this and I'm going to over exaggerate these sketches. You're going to get light that will hit the air to oil interface. Some of that light will reflect and some of that light will refract. And then at the oil plate interface some of that light will reflect and then some of that light will refract. And then at the bottom of the plate, it too will reflect. And we're going to get refraction, refraction again. And so we end up getting three reflected light rays heading off into a direction, hopefully towards your eye. If these rays themselves are in increments of one whole wavelength apart from each other, we're going to get constructive interference. If there are half wavelengths apart, we're going to get destructive interference. Well, in order for us to see the light in a different color than what we're going to see it, you know, not white light or actually having the presence of light, we want constructive interference. So that means this wavelength in the air to oil interface needs to be set out of phase by one entire wavelength in order for it to constructively interfere with the air that reflected. Continuing down, the plate wave also needs to be out of phase by one entire wavelength to constructively interfere with the oil light or the air light. Ultimately, they both need to increase the path in which they're traveling by one entire wavelength. Well, in order to increase the path in which they're traveling by an entire wavelength, that light needs to slow down. In order for it to slow down, it needs to enter a new medium of higher index. That means the plate's index must be higher than the oil's index in order to slow the light down by a whole wavelength. To justify that, use all the terms that I just used. You're even welcome to try to draw a diagram. Talk about interference, though. It's definitely going to come into play. Talk about phase shift of one whole wavelength. It's definitely going to be important. Okay, and part E uh, was on the second page, so ignore the reheading here. Uh, part E is saying that the observer is now moving further away from the white light source, and they're now detecting a color change. We want to describe that color change, meaning that when they were here, they saw a green light, and now that they're further away, they're seeing a different color light. I'm going to tell you right now, they're seeing red light. To explain that, eh, it can be somewhat complex. I like to kind of think of this idea that um, Roy G. Biv is in order of decreasing wavelength. And so as the wavelength increases, we head towards the red end. And as we decrease, we head towards the, the blue end. There's two ways to explain this. Getting further away means we are going to require a longer wavelength of light to interfere as it travels that extra distance. It needs to travel a greater distance and it's undergoing the same phase change that the green did. So ultimately that means the longer wavelength shows up more to the right and the shorter wavelength stuff shows up closer to the inside. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. Now there are other ways that can be connected to multiple other topics like dispersion, the double slit experiment, ultimately you find yourself having the shortest wavelength on the inside and the largest wavelength on the outside. Since you're moving more to the right, you're going to detect something with a greater wavelength. I'm going to grossly exaggerate this by drawing. That green wave might have a certain wavelength and it needs to undergo a phase shift so that this second one that I drew, which I know is not pretty, this one had to travel an extra wavelength than this one traveled. Well, in order for us to continue to have constructive interference, the red one is going to have the same phase shift. It's traveling through the same thickness of that oil or the plate, whatever one makes sense to you. In order for, you know, if it's going to be an entire wavelength apart and now it's traveling a greater distance, it needs to have a longer wave to allow it to travel that extra distance and still be in phase with the reflected light. Alright, that is it for number 7 for the 2014 AP exam.